Okay, let me begin the fifth class meeting of EC574, uh, the gradual level probability and random processes. Here goes the announcements. As always, the handouts are available from the uh, course web page. There are still uh, some students asking passwords. Uh, whenever you see some number, try that number, okay? So it's a handout for uh, Peebles chapter six. The password would be highly likely to be lowercase English character uh, S I X six. So uh, try try that. Okay, no numeric number six. No, uh, yeah. By the way, uh, lecture videos are also available at the uh, CISL .post YouTube channel. And I recommend you to uh, put some clickable timestamps so that your classmates can be helped. Uh, by the way, uh, my TA is still finding the audio problem uh, in recording the uh, lectures. I hope today's uh, class meeting is recorded okay. Uh, homework number two and three were due at uh, 10, 59 a.m. today. Uh, homework number four will be posted <gasps> soon. Uh, you may say that there are too many homeworks. Yeah, th there will be too many homeworks. Corrections, clarifications, common mistakes, misunderstandings, misconceptions, myths. So uh, people say that stationarity means what? Something does not change. That does not mean that the uh, random process is deterministic signal, okay? some statistical property does not change. So stationarity in a very, very wide sense, uh, it just means that some statistical property, it would be uh, described by a PDF, it would be described by an expected value of something, uh, it could be anything, any statistical property, but anyway, that does not change. So since the stationarity as the uh, meaning of the ordinary stationary uh, implies there are too many possible meanings. We define it mathematically. And one definition is this. We define stationarity to order one, then stationarity to order two, and then stationarity to order some finite number n, and strict sense stationarity. Some people, divide the uh, entire set of continuous time or discrete time random processes like this, okay? So here is the, uh, the set of random processes that is stationary to order one, and we will have a subset that is stationary to order two, and we define strict sense stationarity as a random process that is stationary to any finite order n, okay? So actually we do not handle infinite. We just say uh, the, a strict sense stationary random process is stationary to any finite n. Probably now you may have some idea that seems that trick is similar to what we've seen in the Kolmogorov's extension theorem, right? Even though we had countably or infinite many uh, jointly distributed random variables to describe a random process. The Kolmogorov's theorem says that we only need to handle a finite, it could be very large, a, a finite number of random variables, right? Similarly, when we define a strict sense stationary random process, we don't handle infinity, we just say, it is stationary to any finite order n, got it? So you may say that this, this uh, set of the stationary, strict sense stationary random process is the one and it's complement, the complement set of this one includes all non-stationary random processes. That would be the most strict definition of stationarity and the most strict definition of non-stationarity. However, some people uh, relax uh, and increase this uh, stationary 
random process is set. So uh, some people say that, okay, if a random process is in the complement of this set, stationary to order one, so here, right? Then it's non-stationary. It depends on the preference section. So whenever you uh, read non-stationary process, be careful. It depends, the definition may depend on the uh, uh, preference of the writer, okay? Some sometimes they say that they consider this Y sense stationary random process is set and its complement as non-stationary random process set. So be careful, okay? But anyway, now you have some important definitions related to the stationarity. First one is the strict sense stationarity and stationary to any finite order one, two, three, four, and some definition, Y sense stationary. By the way, this Y sense stationality is defined in terms of the mean path or mean process of the random process, which should be constant. And second is that this autocorrelation function must be what? A function of time difference, right? And what motivated that? Actually, that was motivated by the uh, stationarity to order two. So let's uh, remove some more confusions here. Suppose you have a random process X and you take two samples. So you have two random variables, capital X of T1 and capital X of T2. In order to fully describe its statistical property, probably you would need what? The joint PDF, CDF, PMF, characteristic function of these two random variables, right? So this joint PDF is what? Is a two parameter function, right? So in X1 and X2 axis, you have a, some density function. Right, that is the one. And another is that you have freedom to choose T1 and T2. So be careful. When I draw uh, a plane, 2D plane, right? Sometimes the horizontal axis and the vertical axis was X1 and X2. And sometimes the axis represented T1 and T2. Now, when we say that, random process is set at the stationary to order two, what does that mean? We have to use this plane and we must draw parallel lines with same slope. The slope is one, right? And what do we say? We say like this, okay, on this line of slope one, you choose any point, any pair of T1 and T2, then you have a pair of X T1 and X T2, right? Then at this point, you have some density function, right? You see some <laughs> curve, right? And that function, that two dimensional function defined on this plane does not change when you travel on this line. And also, if you draw any line, any parallel line to this one, right? On each line, two different lines may give you different density function. However, if you do not live on a line, then the density function does not change. That is the stationarity to order two, got it? So be careful. Sometimes I use this 2D plane. And in this 2D plane, I would talk about two-dimensional or bivariate CDF or PDF or probability mass function characteristic function, right? And here, I would say what? The uh, second order distribution does not change under time translation. So see that? If this point is 
1 comma 2. Then this point would be 1 plus some delta comma 2 plus some delta, right? So in this sense, on this line, any point has in the form of 1 plus delta comma 2 plus delta. Of course, on this line, it will be diff different, right? But still, uh, the, uh, it has the same form, like something plus displacement delta and another thing plus displacement delta. And <clears throat> so uh, this is the uh, most important thing because uh, in this way, we understand the stationary to order three, four, five, and any n, right? In a multi-dimensional plane, right? With a lot of T1, T2, T3, and T some billion. And then we have a, a plane, right? And then on this plane, we uh, change the T1 uh, by delta, T2 by delta, T3 by delta, Tn by delta, and then what? The capital N dimensional joint PDF does not change, got it? The reason why when you are an undergraduate student, almost every professor from different universities said that, okay, why sense stationarity means that the uh, autocorrelation function is a function of time difference is that they, uh, the autocorrelation function only handles what? Two sampling instances. So as you see here, this straight line means T2 minus T1 equals one. Right? See that? T2 minus T1 equals 1. T2 minus T1 equals 1. So that one time difference kind of uh, specifies the character of this line. So when you talk about why sense stationarity, usually your professor said that the, the, the mean path is constant and autocorrelation function is a function of time difference. Got it? However, uh, they could also say that the autocorrelation function equals T1 plus delta, T2 plus delta for all delta, of course, for all T1 comma T2. Got it? But this is too complicated. So they usually say that there exists a single variable function. Unfortunately, we use the same name again and say that this, there exists a single variable function that is equal to this two-dimensional function. Be careful. Here, this R sub capital XX is what? This function is a function from R squared to R, right? This function is what? Even though it has same name, it is from R into R, right? Be careful. We, the, we used, and your professors used a lot of uh, abuse in notation. Okay, anyway, so I've done this. Ah, another one is that, so uh, I focused on uh, this one, invariance on the time translation, right? And this also, means that the invariance to the uh, selection of the time origin, time zero, okay? See that? Consider the, uh, This axis, time axis, now you have chosen this point as zero. And you want to describe the property of a certain uh, continuous time random process. Now you have, suppose you have found that that process X of T is stationary. For simplicity, let's consider stationary to order one then what does that mean? The first order PDF does not change at all. 
right? When you change the time t. That means your selection of t equals zero does not affect your first order PDF, right? Now let's consider the second order PDF. In order to do that, you have to choose some two points. Now, what is the stationary to order two? If you choose these two points, right? And joint PDF with this displacement does not change, means that you add capital delta, you add some same number, subtract same sum number, they are the same, right? And first, second order, uh, sorry, stationarity to second order implies stationarity to first order, right? So again, whatever you choose time origin zero, first order and second order PDF does not change, right? So stationarity in this way, we can extend and conclude that the, uh, for example, strict sense, strict sense stationarity implies that it doesn't matter which point is chosen as the time origin zero when we view that random process. Actually, that is quite important when we model engineering problems. For example, at every day, every day at 9 a.m., you uh, come to the, uh, your lab and suppose you turn on some machine and you watch the output of some signal. And according to our, how say that, the common sense, the, your equipment shouldn't be generating that different output when you turn it on on next day at 9 a.m., right? So in that case, actually, you translate it or you change it the uh, time origin t equals zero from today's 9 a.m. to tomorrow's 9 a.m. And you hope there is no change. So in that way, we kind of impose or we assume the stationarity of your uh, equipment. Got it? So. Uh, invariance on the time translation, irrelevance to the, the time origin or time reference selection, they mean all the same, got it? Okay, I believe that clarified a lot. And yeah, so again, uh, the stationarity means translation invariance uh, and probabilistic properties are translation invariant, got it? Okay, so overview. We are still covering chapter nine, and I have told you that we will stay that chapter for a long time because uh, we will uh, take a look at almost every chapter in the Peebles textbook related to the random process. And, and then we move to the chapter seven of the populist textbook. Okay, review. We've learned stationarity to order one, two, three, up to any finite number. And from this one, we define the strict sense stationarity. And stationarity means invariance, uh, nth, uh, stationarity to order n means uh, the invariance of nth order joint CDF, PDF, PMF, or characteristic function on the time translation. When n equals two, we often say that uh, uh, something is a function only of time difference. And we also uh, have seen that the uh, first order, uh, uh, sorry, stationarity to order one includes the subset of stationary random processes to order two, blah, blah, blah. By the way, I, I, are you sure that you can show this one? For example, if a random process is stationary to order two, it is stationary to order one. That is this mean, right? Station to order one, you have station to order two, three. Can you prove that? Yeah, that is not that difficult uh, because 
for example, if we want to show that this set is a subset of that, that set, we have to show that the stationary to order two implies stationary to order one, right? So we start from the joint density, for example. And we know that uh, this is translation invariant. See that I have changed the time instance by the same amount and we handle the same arguments for the function because we talk about two joint PDFs are the same, right? So you, we have to use X1 and X2 in the uh, both sides. Now, as you learned in undergraduate probability theory course, from the second order joint PDF, you can find the first order PDF by marginalization. So what do we do? We integrate over, for example, X2, right? Then the left-hand side becomes, sorry. The first order density and the right hand side becomes what? The first order density. And as you see here, we have translation invariance. Got it? So in this way, by generalizing this, you can prove for any nth order, sorry, stationarity to order n implies stationarity to less order. Ready? By the way, uh, whenever I teach a course, I emphasize again and again the power of simplification and uh, visualization. And as you see here, uh, that repeats uh, again and again. Like in order to prove something, we start with the simplest one. We started from showing the stationary to order two implies stationary to order one. And then I just say that, okay, you can easily generalize. Then in your brain, you write some nth order joint PDF, right? And then on the right-hand side, you write uh, nth order PDF with T sub something, now change it to T sub something plus capital Delta, right? And then you integrate with respect to sing one single variable. And then on the next line, you have what? The n minus one's order PDF, n minus one's order PDF. The difference is the time difference uh, by capital delta. So you have lower order uh, stationarity. Got it? So we've done uh, the review number one. And second, we are. Uh, consider the mean function or mean path and autocorrelation function and autocovariance function, which I didn't define. So let me define that one first because it's too simple. Autocovariance function of a random process is defined this way. Here, capital C means the covariance and uh, subscripts X and X means that you take capital X of T and capital X of T plus tau, and then take the covariance of these two random variables. Please do not ask what is covariance of two random variables. The covariance of two random variables is defined as the expectation of the first random variable minus its mean times the second random variable minus its mean. So you have first random variable minus its mean. What is that? That is the mean path or mean function of the random process evaluated at time t. That is denoted by this mu sub x of t. And you also subtract the mean. So covariance means that you somehow centralize your quantity by taking the mean as the reference zero, right? So you subtract and calculate. And by simply expanding this one, first you have what? You have four terms and 
the first term is what? If you take the expectation, that is the autocorrelation function, right? And what about this times that one and you take expectation? Be careful, there is nothing random here because it is already, uh, uh, it is after calculating expectation. So this times this and you take expectation becomes mu sub x of t times mu sub x of t plus tau. And you have negative sign. Similarly, you have same thing with negative sign and same thing with positive sign. So eventually you have minus the mean pass at t and mean pass at t plus tau. Got it? So this simple definition gives us another lemma or consequence. What is that? Auto covariance function equals autocorrelation function minus the product of mean paths. Got it? By the way, uh, probably you've wondered why our undergraduate probability and random processes courses emphasize the mean pass autocorrelation function, autocovariance so much. Why? Probably you've never seen higher order moments like you take x, x of x1, x of t1, x of t2, x of t3, and multiply. Probably you've never seen. Why? Why? Because it's too complicated. <laughs> that is the reason. And second one is that uh, in many cases, since full characterization of a random process is too difficult, we only interested in the first order and second order moment of the random process. For example, suppose you want to predict some random process's future value. And there could be many, many uh, different criteria to uh, build a kind of very good or the optimal predictor. One of the simplest one is a linear predictor. And as we will see in this course, such linear predictor always use the first and second order moments only. So whenever, whatever random process you are given, probably in order to build a linear estimate or predictor, you do not need higher order moments. However, uh, if the random process is not Gaussian, we will see today, hopefully, <laughs> what is the Gaussian random process. If the random process is not Gaussian, some nonlinear predictors could far better perform than linear predictors. In Gaussian case, they perform the same, got it? So uh, this would be a correct statement. Mean pass, autocorrelation, autocovariance functions are very important and widely used, so useful. However, they, are, they do not fully represent the statistics you need, got it? That would be the graduate version of your lesson. By the way, uh, let's talk more about the uh, y sense. Uh, okay, before uh, talking about that, sometimes if it is clear that you talk only about a single random process, we usually drop this auto in autocorrelation function and auto in autocovariance function. Got it? Uh, y sense stationarity, as I already mentioned, mean functional pass, and uh, uh, th that is. Uh, constant function and the correlation function is uh, a function of time difference. Here, mean function, correlation functions are translation invariant, right? And you know what does that mean? By the way, uh, y sense stationary random processes set includes the set of all stationary processes to order two. And here I draw a Venn diagram to give you the uh, visualization. So uh, I would I usually ask my graduate students to draw a lot of Venn diagrams, usually, and you also try that. That helps you a lot, even though 
it has a lot of limitation because we only can think clearly in this two, two dimensional plane. So whenever you have more than three, then it's very hard to see what is the intersection and what is the union. But sometimes we also simplify, right? So even though we have many, many uh, subsets, simplify, simplify, then usually we have three important subsets. Then we can easily draw three circles and then we can think very clearly, okay? What else? Now, so uh, this is the last one. Uh, in terms of the autocovariance function, we define, we define a y sense covariance stationarity. We define y sense stationarity. What's the definition? It, the definition consists of two lines, mean pass, constant. Autocorrelation function, function of time difference. Got it? If you recall my definition of here, autocovariance function, what would be y sense covariance stationarity? Stationary. And the stationarity means that this autocovariance function is a function of time difference, which means that here there exists a single variable function that is equal to the uh, two-dimensional function. Got it? Then uh, let me ask you a question. Covariance stationarity. Why sense covariance stationarity? Sometimes they say covariance stationarity, but I do not like that. Why sense covariance stationarity implies why sense stationarity? True or false? Okay. So let's have some stretching. Okay. So ra raise your hands. Both hands, raise your hands, please, please. And if you believe my statement is true, still raise your hand, otherwise fold your hand. So what is that? Y sense covariance stationarity implies Y sense stationarity. Is it true? And okay. The answer is wrong, okay. Y sense stationarity implies Y sense covariance stationarity because of this, see that? If X is Y sense stationary, this function is a function of tau and they are constants. So the right hand side is function only of tau. So that implies covariance stationarity. However, some random process that has very strange mean function, which is not constant, may result in this one. For example, consider a zero mean y sense stationary random process, x of t, got it? So counter example. Consider a zero mean y sense stationary random process x of t. And you define a new random process y of t that is the sum of x and some arbitrary function, non-zero, definitely function of t. Then, you have this center diversion equal to x of t, right? Now, see, is y, y sense stationary? No. because of that. However, it is covariance station. Got it? So be careful. Okay, <laughs> now preview. Uh, we are going to, going back to the uh, lecture note and we define this, uh, we cover this single page. And unfortunately we do not cover next page, but jump to uh, section 6.5. But I will augment a lot before we go to Gaussian random process and Poisson random process. I uh, decided to cover these two random processes first and then go back to ergodicity. Okay. I've already given you two uh, 
examples of discrete time random processes. One is discrete time discrete random process. And the second is the uh, discrete time continuous random process. They were very simple. They consisted of IID random variables. Uh, the first one was IID Bernoulli random variable with parameter P. And second one was the IID Gaussian random variable with mean zero and variance sigma square. And you've seen what they are stationary to any finite order. How did, did we prove that? We just derived the joint density function because joint density function or joint uh, mass function factors right into the what product of uh, first order uh, densities. So we could easily show these two random processes are stationary, strict sense stationary random processes. So they are what from the uh, Venn diagram, they are y sense stationary random processes. Got it? But we want to see some, for example, non-stationary random process or some very special uh, station, uh, y sense uh, stationary random process in continuous time. And they are Gaussian random processes and Poisson random processes. So we will see that first. But before doing that, let's take a look at this page. So now, so far, so far, uh, we consider the single random process mostly, okay? Single random process. And even a single random process involved how many random variables? Infinite, infinitely many random variables, right? However, as we daily, every day see, in a, especially in a stock market, there are many, what? Many, many random processes they have some statistical dependence. For example, suppose today is uh, September, uh, what, September 12th, and this time is 8, 9, uh, 59 a.m. The year 2001. And last night, in the New York, there were terrorism, uh, terrorists attack to the uh, Twin Tower, right? 911, you know, right? That 911 occurred year 2001. I, I was the first semester professor at the time. I still remember the day. That was a terrible day. Anyway, what happened in the stock market last night in the United States? It plunged due to the terrorist attack. And now, today, we are about to open our stock market in Seoul. And you definitely expect what? Our stock market index today will also plunge, right? In that way, we know, even without being taught about random processes, there are some signals with uncertainty, and some signals with uncertainty, they provide some information to each other, right? We want to handle that kind of situation. So just the thinking about a single signal with uncertainty and model it a single random process, we are not satisfied at all. We want to handle many, at least two, right? Random processes at the same time. So, as I told you, whenever we talk about many something, we start from what? One, right? Because that is simple. Sometimes that is singular, but that's, this, that generates some strange thing. And then we start with two, right? So let's think about two random processes, X and Y. And also to make everything simple here, let's consider two continuous time random processes. Got it? Now, let me ask you a question. How can we fully characterize? Here, fully characterize means we know every statistical property of these random processes. So how can we fully characterize these two random processes? And now, uh, since you uh, have been taking my course, what? You have two tools. 
One is kind of uh, being motivated by the Kolmogorov's approach. Second one is uh, motivated by the major theoretic approach. So what do you say? So X that represents actually uncountably infinite many jointly distributed random variables. Y also represents uncountably infinite jointly distributed random variables. Situation seems almost the same as when we handle a single random variable, right? Suppose you have uncountably infinite set and uncountably infinite set. Union is also an uncountably infinite set, right? So you can immediately uh, sense or feel that, okay, let me just extend Kolmogorov's approach to define or kind of characterize this one. So from X, so here is a bag of infinite random variables named as X of T. Here is another bag. You choose some finite M of them and you choose finite N of them, okay? And sampling instance could be different, okay? Some textbook says same sampling instance, but that is not necessary, okay? You can choose finite M and finite N random variables. And since you have these M plus N random variables, what do you want to do? You want to find the joint density function or joint CDF or characteristic function or PMF, depending on whether they are discrete random variables or continuous random variables, right? So probably what you want to do is that we can choose any M random variables from this bag and any N random variables, a finite M and N, and we want to form uh, provide a joint PDF. And that is the first thing. And what would be the second thing? They, this uh, M plus N order joint CDFs must be all consistent. Right? You know what I mean by consistency. You, you, for example, have third order PDF and you marginalize to the second order and suddenly find that your second order PDF are different. That is not consistent, right? So uh, this uh, capability of finding the joint PDF and consistency would fully describe two random processes, right? That is the first thing. What would be the second one? Second one is not that difficult. As always, we start from a, an underlying probability space that governs some random experiment. And that random experiment gives us what? Outcome S. And since we have random process X, probably we want to have some mapping rule named X sub T of S. And we would, we would have another mapping rule entitled Y sub T of S. That's all, okay? So these two functions share the same probability space. That is the key in the major theoretic description, okay? So, that part is totally missing, as you see in our undergraduate book, <laughs> but I kind of augment it. Now, given this, uh, given two jointly distributed random processes, what do we mean by they are statistically independent? What do we mean? And if you Use that one, you may have some trouble in defining that. So let's go back to Kolmogorov's approach. What do you think? You have chosen M and N random variables, and whatever M and N, you choose this group of random variables, two groups. What results in factoring of the joint density. Means this random vector length m random vector and length n random vector, whatever sampling points 
they have been taken, they are independent. Got it? So here, this group and that group becomes independent random variables. Okay. Joint stationarity. Uh, by the way, how can we extend this to uh, three, three random processes sign independent? How? Very simple. Here is X, here is Y, here is Z, right? And you take L of them at any time instance, M of them at any time instance, and N of them at, at any time instance, and then you put these two uh, this L uh, random variable into a vector, M vector, length N vector, and these three vectors are independent for any LMN, for any L tuple of time instance, M tuple of time instance, N tuple of time instance. And you extend that, then uh, whatever finite number of random variables you have, you can define the independence of them. Got it? By the way, uh, yeah, this is the, our undergraduate version. Uh, joint stationary two, okay. By the way, uh, similarly, we can define uh, stationarity to order one, two, three, four, five, six, any finite n. How? How? Yeah, we choose what? Joint stationarity to order two means that you choose two, suppose you are given X and Y. You choose two random variables from these two bags. There are three cases, right? You choose two out of this X bag, you choose two out of this Y bag, or you choose one and one, right? Got it? They must be what? Stationarity means time invariant. What about three? Then you can choose three, zero, one, a two, one, one, two, zero, three, right? In that case, still, they are, uh, they, they are uh, time invariant, translation invariant, blah, blah, blah. Got it? So you can, you can extend to any three, uh, random processes, four random processes, up to any finite. Okay, now, jointly, why send stationary? What do you want to do? Similar. Now, you have X bag and Y bag, and Y send stationarity must talk about mean path, which means that expectation of some single random variable, and autocorrelation function, that is expectation of two random variables. Now, first, you choose two out of this box. And you want to say that mean, mean you know, first uh, mean of single random variable is constant. Mean of uh, two random product of two random variables is constant. What does that mean? X is Y sensation. Now you choose zero, two. What does that mean? Y is Y sensation. Then, you choose one and one. In that case, uh, you have to compute what? Expectation of X of T and Y of S, or X of T1 and Y of T2. So this, our flow of idea give us that we have to handle something like this. Ready? And what do you, how do you name this? This is kind of correlation function, right? And it's not autocorrelation because this is X and this is Y. So this function is called the cross correlation function. two random processes and X and Y. And what do you want to say? You 
want to add some capital delta to x t1 and capital delta to t2. So this y sensationality must imply What does that mean? This means there must exist a single variable function. Unfortunately, we name the function the same, and it must be a function of time difference. Got it? So given two jointly distributed random processes, they are jointly wise and stationary. That is defined as First one, x is y sense stationary, means mean is constant, autocorrelation is a function of time difference, mean is constant, the autocorrelation is time difference, and cross correlation function is also time difference, function of time difference, got it? So we are done. I believe we are done, am I? Not yet, okay. So I've covered this one. That one, that one. Okay, <laughs> this is missing. By the way, uh, if you do communications, signal processing, and control, whenever you have multiple something, you form a vector. So let me deviate a little bit to talk about uh, random vectors. Because we already know what is a random vector. So what about forming a vector from a random process like this. So what is a random vector? Random vector is a collection of jointly distributed finite number of random variables with index. Usually that index ranges from one to some finite number, uh, some natural number, uh, some consecutive natural number. So for example, if we uh, use this x underline or x underscore, we usually define this way, x1, x2, da, 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 then xn. So here, this random vector consists of lowercase n jointly distributed random variables. Got it? And how do we characterize that one? We may use a PDF. We may use a CDF. We may use a PMF. Or we may use, sorry, a joint characteristic function. Right? Also, uh, if you are now intrigued by the major theoretic approach, you may write it this way. Got it? Right? There is some underlying probability space governing the uh, random experiment. And here's a mapping rule. For every S, you have a vector. Then this is a random vector. Of course, this. Uh, each function must each function must be a measurable function, but let's not talk about. It, okay. Now, similarly, you may have some signal. For example, you have chosen two hundred companies, uh, Cosb Index, Samsung Electronics, LG Electronics, Costco, blah blah blah, and you put into a single vector, x. Got it. That value may change, right? Like this. Right? From 9 a.m. to 3.30 p.m., these each signal, first element, second element, will change, right? So now you have a vector value signal with uncertainty, and you want to uh, handle that uncertainty using probability theory. That is what we are talking about here. By the way, I, I want to emphasize again, there is another group 
of people uh, who handle uncertainty by using chaos theory. Okay, be careful. I'm not that person. And usually uh, the control guys love it. Some control guys love it. By the way, this is a vector valued random process. Now, you would say that, wait a minute. That is just finite number of jointly distributed random processes we've already seen, right? We've, we have just put them nicely in a vector form. That's all. However, whenever we have a vector, there is something strange. For example, let's consider the uh, sample path. Is it very simple? Yes, because what is the definition of expectation of something? I taught you expectation of something is what? Always approximated by summation of some, something's value times its probability, right? So expectation of vector valued random process must be what? For each t, you must have a vector. And that depends on t. So what do you have? You must have some time function consisting of here 200 uh, functions, right? So this is a vector valued sample pass or uh, mean pass, sorry, mean pass. Now here goes the difficulty. So we handled the first order, right? First order uh, expectation. What about second order? The simplest one would be this one. It doesn't make sense, right? Because the first vector is a column vector and second one is column vector. And what do we do? We usually consider transposition. So we have a matrix. So this is a matrix and you have expectation. So what do you have? According to our previous notation, we want to call that as a autocorrelation function of the vector random process X. So we use R means correlation and we put X of T1, X of T2. This is what I love, but what people usually, due to the typographical easiness, something like this, right? They are all notations actually. But here we should see that we need transposition. By the way, you may say, wait a minute, can you put transposition here? Of course, yes. In that case, that one could be obtained from this matrix valued autocorrelation function, right? But the converse is not true. So people love this one. Okay. So, By the way, I hope you've taken already uh, the linear algebra course. So, you know, trace of A, B, and if the product B, A is also well-defined, then they must be the same when you change the order, right? This does not hold when product A, B is well-defined, but B, A is not well-defined. As you see, if A is a column vector, uh, column vector, B is a row vector, then it's a matrix, but here is a, a scalar, so no problem, right? So they are well-defined, well-defined traces must be the same. Anyway, so this is uh, uh, autocorrelation, autocorrelation function. And now uh, let's talk about why sense stationarity of this vector valued random process.
So whenever we talk about why and stationarity of a random process, mean path is not a function of time, autocorrelation, function of time difference. So By the way, as I told you, I really love subtracting T2 from T1, even though uh, in, uh, in our textbook, how is usually defined as that one. Got it? Okay, it's just a preference. If you really hate that, just write it that way. It doesn't that matter when we talk about real valued processes. Still here, uh, they are all real random variables. Got it? So, uh, joint wise and stationarity actually is restatement of wise and stationarity over random vector. Consider this case. Suppose you have two random processes in X and Y and define Z as uh, this one, got it? Now, Z of T is Y sense stationary. What does that mean? Implies mu Z of T, which is what? Mu X of T, mu Y of T, right? It's not a function of time, which means that this is constant and that is constant, right? Second one, correlation function is function of time difference. What is that? It's a matrix valued, right? What is the one, one element? That is Rxx t1 comma t2, right? What about one, two? That is x t1. Sorry, x t1, y t2. So x, y, t1, t2. What about this one? y, x, t1, t2. y, y, t1, t2. Now, this matrix valued function is a function of time difference. What does that mean? Each entry is a function of time difference. Means what? x is now y sense stationary. y is y sense stationary. And their cross correlation function must be function of time difference. And you may say that, wait a minute, there are two, but uh, as I told you again and again, if you remember the commutativity of the multiplication, then what do we have? Uh, by the way, yeah, no, no, that, that shouldn't be true. Okay, here, this is a function of time difference. It means that we have uh, uh, tau. And what about this one? R, Y, X, tau, right? And here, R, X, Y, tau equals R, Y, X, negative tau, something like that. Okay? Anyway, it means the autocorrelation, a cross-correlation function is a function of time difference. So, uh, in graduate level, uh, we usually do not talk about joint y and stationarity of two random processes. We just put them together into a vector and say that a random vector is y and stationary. Done. Okay? And because that is more extendable, expandable to uh, multiple random processes. Okay, and then let me move to what? Yeah, Gaussian random process.
Many of you, since many of you are not a freshman in graduate life, so you already know a lot about a Gaussian random process. So let me start from a very simple, uh, not that important, but very simple Gaussian process. And this is motivated by the uh, major theoretic definition. So let's see. A random process, continuous time random process, x of t equals a plus bt plus t squared, where a and b are independent and identically distributed. By the way, uh, I may uh, ask you to write what does the uh, IID mean? Spell it out precisely. And you must write independent and identically distributed. Got it? <laughs> it's not independently identically. Okay, independent and identically distributed. Because this is a chunk and that is another chunk, okay? When you talk about two random variables, you may say that two random variables are independent. When you talk about two random variables, you may say that two random variables are identically distributed. And you combine them, you have independent and identically distributed two random variables, or independent and identically distributed three random variables, got it? I was actually humiliated because when uh, I used uh, independently and identically distributed in my uh, one of the paper and uh, uh, a landmate pointed out, hey, Junho, this should be independent. Shame on you, something like that. <laughs> Anyway, so we have a random process. And let me ask you a question. At every time instant t, you have a random variable, right? Is it a Gaussian random variable? Yes, why? Why? You've learned in your undergraduate probability and random variable courses, summation of, this is Gaussian, right? And now you fix t to, for example, one, and you have b, and you have four, right? Summation of multiple, of course, jointly distributed Gaussian random variables. Independence means jointly distributed. Uh, Gaussian random variables is Gaussian. So what? At each time t, you have a Gaussian random variable. Now, now you choose any two time instance, t1 and t2. So you have x sub t1 and x sub t2. You put them together into a vector form. Now, question, is it a two-dimensional Gaussian random vector? Of course, yes, okay. You can, you can easily find what? The mean vector and the covariance matrix. Okay, it seems some of you may say that, hey, professor, I do not remember anything about Gaussian random vector. <laughs> and it's really frustrating. Okay, then, uh, okay, let me deviate more. Let's finish. A random vector X is a collection of jointly distributed random variables indexed by one, two, dot, 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 n, okay? So in your undergraduate approach, you have something like that. And as I told you, in our major theoretic graduate level 
approach, you have what? multiple measurable functions fed by same value s, right? And by the way, this is equivalent to, as I already have shown you, something like that, right? Got it? So this is a definition of a uh, random vector, random. Now, here goes the definition. A random vector x consisting of n real random variables is called Gaussian. If what? When do we say a random vector is a Gaussian random vector, especially real valued Gaussian random vector. When? Some of you may say that, okay, each random variable, there are n random variables, each random variable must be Gaussian. That's not the definition. That's not the, that, that, that is just the consequence of the definition. The definition, surprisingly, is better to be described in terms of the characteristic function. So this characteristic function denoted by phi sub, this is capital phi sub x of omega, that is defined by using another notation, expectation notation, but this is very simple. E to the j, here j means the square root of negative one, and here goes the omega transpose and x, okay? And by the way, this is just the definition of uh, any uh, characteristic function over random vector. And this equals some special form. In that case, we call that random vector x is Gaussian, real Gaussian. And this is Just use C, C, X, X, okay. This is confusing, but uh, change a little. By the way, the last line may confuse you, but it means this is, okay. I better be more slow. Okay. This part means, of course this means that it's a, uh, matrix, n by n matrix. And this means it's a symmetrical matrix, right? Because transpose equals the uh, itself. And that part may look strange, but matrix greater than or equal to zero matrix. That does not mean entry by entry zero greater than zero. It means positive semi-definiteness about positive semi-definiteness, you look up your Wikipedia, okay? So positive semi-definite. Okay. So 
Gaussianity over random vector is defined in terms of its joint characteristic function. This is joint characteristic function. And joint characteristic function is an exponential function with exponent given by what? Two terms. The first term involves a vector. Second term involves some positive semi-definite matrix and it's quadratic. And you have no idea. So special case, if the positive semi-definite matrix is now definite, positive definite, then we can describe this distribution in terms of the joint PDF. Great. And it is what? It is what? the square root of two pi raised to the power of n and determinant of this matrix. And you have exponential minus one half x minus mu x transpose c x x inverse x minus mu x done, okay? So uh, if the, uh, this strange positive semi-definite matrix is invertible, okay? Then we have well-defined joint PDF. That is what you have seen in your undergraduate book, got it? The reason why I love this definition in terms of the joint characteristic function is that sometimes the matrix is not invertible, even though it is positive semi -dip. And as a graduate student, you should know that. As an undergraduate student, uh, you should not uh, have to uh, necessarily uh, do that. By the way, this is the definition of a Gaussian random vector. And here, we need some properties of a Gaussian random vector. For example, any linear transformation of a Gaussian random vector is a Gaussian random vector. How can we prove that? We can easily prove using the characteristic function. Got it? That's why I love the uh, joint characteristic approach to define a Gaussian random vector. Okay, uh, let's review that uh, on Thursday. Okay, that's all for today.